Muy buenos días a todas, a todos, queridos amigos, amigas. Muchísimas gracias por estar esta mañana acá en este acto de inauguración del primer congreso sobre jurisdicción universal que desde el día de hoy y tres más hasta el día 23 nos va a reunir en torno a expertos y expertas de eh, todo el mundo hasta un total de 15 países y los organismos judiciales y de derechos humanos más importantes del mundo. Vamos a, a tratar de poner en común ideas, a desarrollar experiencias, a conversar, a debatir sobre el fenómeno de la jurisdicción universal. No se nos escapa que en España últimamente ha habido un desarrollo de este principio negativo y preocupante. No es el momento de hacer en este acto de inauguración crítica alguna más allá de afirmar que sin lugar a dudas va a estar en la mesa de debate cuál es la situación, en qué medida esa normativa afecta a las víctimas, que lo hace negativamente, muy negativamente, y qué podemos hacer desde la sociedad civil, desde el mundo del derecho, desde los organismos de derechos humanos, para desarrollar este principio para que desde la reflexión y el debate y la discusión podamos encontrar un camino que nos pueda continuar sirviendo y que no renunciemos a un logro fundamental en la historia de la humanidad que es la lucha desde el derecho frente a la barbarie. En el día de hoy comenzamos, eh, vamos a comenzar esta exposición con unas palabras también de quien es la coordinadora académica del evento Dolores de Gado, la fiscal Dolores de Gado, que como muchos y muchas sabéis ha sido una de las profesionales que en el momento más interesante, más importante en el que España se celebraron los juicios contra el represor Adolfo Stilingo junto con las acusaciones populares y las acusaciones particulares de las víctimas ejerció la acusación en ese caso consiguiendo una condena eh, nuestro vicepresidente es lo Benamí no ha podido estar en este momento estará después por tanto en función del presidente del patronato de la fundación Fundación agradecer de nuevo la presencia de todas y todos y ya sin más preámbulos, Lola, Lola, you can address the audience and then we will move on to the first two speeches. Good morning. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Can't you? Is it working? Can can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Good. Oh. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you all. Thank you very much, Baltazar. Thank you and thank you to your foundation. Because at a time, as Maria Gazon said during the presentation or, or, of, of this introduction of this conference, at a time when it is too, so important to have this opportunity to discuss, to disseminate knowledge. And it is interesting that we can discuss universal sovereignty, advocating human rights, trying to promote the defense of victims, trying to find some spaces where impunity is not allowed. And so having this kind of panels with top representatives from all over the world that are fully committed to human rights, 
promotion. It is always useful to have this opportunity and it is encouraging. Encouraging because there are many people, many people who are active in the defense of human rights. There are so many people all over the world looking up to us. This is Madrid, this is a Tuesday morning, and we are well a bunch of friends and, and experts and people that are committed, as I said, and are trying to discuss a topic that might have future implications regarding universal jurisdiction. And that's why I would like to thank you, Valtasar, thank you for this hard work, and thank you all in the audience, because we will have an opportunity to share an idea that it's, well, forward-looking. We want a future, we want opportunities for universal jurisdiction here in Spain and in the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. After the first two speeches, we will have time for uh, questions and answers. Uh, you will have some cards handed, and so you can write down your questions. And they will take questions, as I said, after their presentations. Fiscal de los Ferenc, uh, Benjamin Ferenc was a prosecutor during the trials for the Nuremberg crisis. He'll try and explain his experience in that historical time without any comparison at all. And that has been so very important, and it is important for the future of international justice trying to find the most serious crimes, crimes against humanity. He is of Hungarian origin. He is a US attorney. He was the prosecutor during those Nuremberg trials. Mr. Ferenc was the Lord Advocate in the US during the Einsatzgruppen cases that Associated Press called the largest trial for manslaughter in, in for homicide sorry in history several defendants for the murder of over a million people afterwards he became an advocate for the creation of the international criminal court and from 1985 to 1996 he was a, a lecturer for international law at the Hayes University. He got the Erasmus Award back in 2009, and he has authored several papers and books on the need to use international law as a way to find peace. Then we will have a paper on universal jurisdiction against impunity and the need to have it. Um, this paper will be given by Paulo Abrao, who is now National Secretary at the Justice Ministry in Brazil and who is a President of the Amnesty Commission. His hard work has been very important in a country such as Brazil, where until recently, well, it was just an identical example to Spain that a pardon law prevented any kind of action from being taken. But this commission that he chairs, he chairs is conducting real work all over Brazil, trying to raise awareness, to promote discussion, try to channel compensation and reparation, at the same time that Brazil is undergoing important events with the development of the Truth Commission. He holds a PhD on law from the Universidad Pontificia in Rio de Janeiro, and also has a master's degree by the University of Valle del Sinas. He's also an expert in human rights uh, processes and democratization processes, and he is a professor at the master's degree in the uh, Catholic Brazilia University. He is also a consultant for the Memory Reference Center, which is a project which 
made it made the private archive of the uh, of the presidency cabinet public. He's also coordinator of the political memorial project, and he's a member to the Cultural Guidelines Council for the Resistance Museum in Sao Paulo. Without further ado, Benjamin, you have the floor.